Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician, the Civil War, a upcoming American Civil War game being developed by Oliver Kuppelmuller. It's available in early access on Steam, and this is a game that mirrors both the strategic and tactical sides of the American Civil War in a pretty ambitious project made by a pretty small team. Now, this video is episode number five in my Let's Play series, playing this game as the Confederacy with the 1861 Grand Campaign. We are picking things up after a major battle that occurred in the Shenandoah Valley. The Union in June of 1861 pulled off a pretty impressive uh, maneuver uh, by the AI where they brought two armies, both of which were smaller than PGT Beauregard's Army of Northern Virginia, the Army of the Ohio with about 20,000 men and the Army of Northeastern Virginia with about 16,000 men. They brought both of them west. Actually, the Northeastern Army was in front of DC and then the Ohio Army was in the west. So they had one army converge from the west. They had one army converge from the north coming down the Shenandoah Valley. And they were converging on a Confederate force under Joseph E. Johnson of about 7,000 men. So about 36,000 to 7,000. We were able to race PGT Beauregard's army to the west on railways uh, to get to uh, Winchester before the enemy armies arrived. And so this was very much like the Battle of Bull Run historically was. So we ended up having a battle of about 36,000 Union troops and about 24,000 Confederates. We were able to hold on with Johnston's troops until Beauregard's reinforcements came up. And while the AI's tactical maneuvers were not terrible they were also nowhere near aggressive enough for the situation you would think they would have attacked more aggressively although who knows in 1861 for the union what they would have done and so we were able to beat them both in detail pretty considerably it was a two-day battle the first day johnson held on with some pretty heavy losses the second day we counterattacked when the union didn't bother to attack us and drove them from the field after some pretty heavy fighting on the right flank um so overall i think about seven thousand casualties were lost a well done maneuver that I was very impressed by the AI strategically, less so on the tactics. Um, and we're about to fight another battle. So we drove both of those armies back. One of them is retreating. One of them may not retreat as quickly as it should. And so we follow them up the valley and see if we can finish them off. We do, this is uh, initially going to take a look at the strategic side of things, but it'll pr pretty quickly jump into a battle again. And uh, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. So if you're interested in seeing more of those, um, you know, there's a link in the description to find those. I don't always put the entire stream on YouTube, depending on how much downtime there is and clicking through menus. So if you ever want to see the full uncut version, it's over there. But I hope you guys enjoy the video. Leave your thoughts below and I'll stop talking because three minutes of introduction is well more than enough. Let's just jump right back into the live stream. So the Army of Northeastern Virginia didn't lose too many men, 450. Department of the Ohio lost the bulk of their casualties. Doesn't seem like they're retreating, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to push forward to drive them out of the valley. There are no armies in front of us on the way to Richmond. But the Department of Pennsylvania, which has now been reinforced, uh, these troops under Patterson, um, do pose a threat. So we're going to try and get these guys driven out of the valley before the Pennsylvania troops show up. I'm assuming the enemy will keep retreating for a time. Whoa. Whoa. We instantly got a new battle. So some of the Union troops withdrew. But not all of them. So we immediately got a new battle. And it looks like there are two brigades with low morale. Some of the troops are routed. But yeah, we're going to fight another one. This is against the Northeastern Virginia Army, which didn't suffer too many casualties. So just like that, a new battle. We're going to be on the Winchester map again. Do, 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 do. General Johnston is in command. If 
about the guys in the picture. No wonder I won. The guy with no picture, you mean? Okay. Supply situation of our army is outstanding. The enemy is green and morale is reported to be stable. Okay. Shields look like he's been embalmed. Yeah, they should have a photo for him. He was not like some obscure figure. He played a pretty big role. All right, we were on the offensive, right? Yeah. Okay. So interestingly enough, the enemy is going to be on the heights we were on last time. And we are coming up from the south. So we should probably wait for... We're not going to dig in either. We should probably wait for... Beauregard to show up. Let's go ahead and move in a single line, though, and then let's move. I'm guessing this area will be open near the Willward Pike. So it's the same field, but we're going to be attacking from south to north, and they'll be defending us. So a little bit of a different situation than the last one. I'm not sure where I guess PGT will come from the south we didn't see any reinforcements for that oh shit I'll have to unclick that for a second we didn't see any indication that they're going to have reinforcements coming so all right halt the enemy is not on the heights they are dug in or at least they appear to be dug in with breastworks, not parapets, along the river at Milltown. Stuart, sometimes the orders are a little bit slow. So Stuart's boys just went right up to the front of the enemy line. Okay, Beauregard has arrived to the south. I don't get why the objective is on the right. That's weird. All right, his troops are on the field, so let's bring him up. Probably extend past the enemy line. Now, if there's enemy troops on the Greenwood Heights, our flank's going to be in the air. But let's get our troops up. It's also close to nightfall. So we may not fight at all today. All right, the guys with the rifled muskets... McCullough, Jackson's brigade, move forward and engage the enemy before nightfall. We're just scouting out the enemy position. Maybe this was dumb. Met. Yeah, this was dumb. Jackson's Brigade's gonna get routed before the end of the day. And they did. Bye! Well, at least McCullough got himself disgraced right away, hopefully. We'll get Johnson's units routed before the battle starts. Borgard takes so fucking long to get his troops up. Early's brigade's getting shot to pieces pretty badly too. He routed. 
Well, this is why you don't battle, I guess, on uh, high speed, huh? Longstreet drove him back, though. Alright. So... Where'd Boat... Where'd Johnson go? Uh, there you are. All right. Actually, that's good. That's a good result. Because he pushed the enemy flank in. So the good news is they've actually been pushed off their their strongest positions. I will take that result. Cole's boys ready to fight again, or are they not in good shape? We'll also leave Stuart back here. I'm not sure what the enemy has on this objective, if any, if anything. But Stuart will tell us if they're coming up behind us. And then, oh my god. Beauregard still is, like, taking us dear fucking sweet time. I know it's one road, but you can't get any further? What if we put you in successive lines. Maybe that'll make it easier for us to come up. All right. So I committed Johnson's boys already, but we're going to hopefully get Beauregard's boys moving quickly here. Just like that, Pond's Brigade is in action against multiple enemy brigades. Walton, you're going to move north. Then we'll have Meager. Uh, all right. So Early's ready to route. Longstreet's not. This was a little bit. I got over my skis. I was like, we're going to do it. <laughs> Not so much. This might be a defeat. All right, so Early's boys are broken. French is coming up to support Longstreet's flank. Johnson's army is in fucking trouble. Beauregard, meanwhile, could probably fight even if Johnson's troops all get routed. It still claims we're winning a minor victory here. I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense to me, but... Kemper's artillery is routing as well. Hopefully Longstreet gained some fame. I do hope Early is not disgraced. Don't really care about McCullough's status. There's a militia brigade. is Meager and Walton. Why are they moving up the same road at the same time? I ordered them to go staggered. All right, Frost. And then Van Dorn. Don't use roads. Just move over this way. You're on horses. You should be fine. French has taken heavy losses. Longstreet's doing okay. He just drove back enemy cavalry. And then 
McCullough looks like he's driving back the Militia Brigade. French has taken some pretty heavy casualties. Man, Longstreet, if you drive back, like, three Federal Brigades all by your lonesome, hell yeah, brother. Better be frickin' famous everywhere. I suspect this will be a less overall bloody battle. Well, if you're at the front of the line, Magruder, just get your troops up there. French's boys are hanging in there, firing into the flank of the 2nd Brigade. Longstreet's boys, likewise, doing their thing. McCullough routed the Militia Brigade. Good for you, McCullough. You, uh, salvaged your reputation a bit. I deployed my army like an idiot, but I stayed aggressive. And so far, it's play, it's panned out. We've broken, I think, one wing of the Federal Army just with Johnson's boys. I don't even know if PGT is going to arrive in time. Curious if the enemy's got any troops up there on the objective. We'll investigate with Stuart. We'll advance Longstreet here to engage with the enemy behind this fence. We'll advance French into the enemy flank. We've got the 4th Brigade caught with flank and front fire. Longstreet could break without too much prodding. Right, Breed's pulling back. Longstreet's boys did it again. fire on these retreating men because if you if I was you I would Get behind that fence line long street the enemy's almost been defeated we're only just getting our first elements of Beauregard's guards troops up So we broke one flank of their army. Oh, Longstreet's gone. His boys broke. Oh. I really hope that doesn't impact your reputation. You did such a goddamn good job. All right, that leaves Cooper's brigade behind this fence line. Gruder and Walton are going to form a line. Frost will be the reserve.
Don't rout you boys. You fought so well. Speed up. There's some artillery dueling going on right now, but mostly troops are just repositioning themselves. Thanks for the sub. Appreciate the support. Or the resub, rather. Alright. Walton, move forward and engage the enemy. Magruder, you do so as well. And then Cooper, you're also going to advance. Three division attack. Shall we coordinate? Probably not. The enemy's not fighting in their trench lines, it look like. Richard Ewell's brigade looks like it's eating most of the enemy attack here on the front. Maxi Gregg, famous boys. And on the other flank. Is the butcher living up to his name? So far I've been butchering Yanks. So it depends on your definition. Oh, French is in trouble. Why didn't... McCullough, you move forward. I ordered you to. Move way down here. Alright, well. Catch me in advice, boys. Oh shit, my right flank, I think, is. Oh no. French is hanging on for now. Joseph E. Johnson's boys are suffering the bulk of it. 2,200 casualties. Red Frost. Up to the reserve. There's Van Dorn. Never ordered you forward. You're back here. Okay. We caught the enemy troops in a bit of a, a vice here. You can see pretty heavy casualties on some of their lead units between these two divisions of ours. Walton, you're going to advance. Magruder also. So we did, we caught these enemy troops in a bit of a salient down here in the south. They inflicted pretty heavy losses on us. 2,200 on Johnston so far. And then Beauregard only has lost 500 men. Federals are deciding they can't volley me with my troops behind these earthworks of theirs. So they're charging and dying. They broke! Keep moving, boys! Do they have any troops on the objective? They don't seem to. Longstreet's boys rallied. Good for you, Longstreet. Go take that objective. And then Frost, go 
push into the town. Van Dorn. The reformer on the ridge is outside of town. Kind of, sort of, not really. But the enemy holds the objective, so it does give them points. So we need to go take it. All right, the enemy army is retreating. I don't really see who to charge with Van Dorn. Go charge keys. I don't really feel like the charging after a battle when you're in the pursuit phase really influences much. But they're running. Now the AI had a pretty good defensive position left earlier in the battle. We pushed them out of it. They were in a little bit of a salient, but they had a pretty good dug in ground that pretty badly wrecked Johnston. You can actually see, granted, this is because I fought with a third of my infantry before the rest of the troops showed up, but you can see we suffered more than the enemy did. We suffered 2,700 infantry losses to their 2,500. They did lose 350 cavalry versus only two of our own. We lost 14 of our 36 guns. They lost 11 of their 12, 20, so we lost more guns. All told, we lost more men than the enemy did, and that's because they did do a reasonably good job of defending behind that creek. Um, but it's also because I went in half-cocked. Still, victory's a victory, another victory for the Confederacy. The Union's driven back, and now two of their principal armies in the Eastern Theater have been defeated. I will probably have to shift PGT's force to the east if that Department of Pennsylvania wants to try and advance on Richmond, though. That was, I think, a pretty competently led invasion of the Shenandoah Valley where they brought one army of the Ohio out from the west and then one army of the northeastern Virginia from the north, and they had two armies converge on our position. And if we hadn't moved John, if we hadn't moved PGT via rail, he got there just in time, very, very Manassas-like. If he hadn't gotten there just in time, we would have been outnumbered more than two to one in that initial fight, and it would have probably been a rough, roughly handled one. Um, but because we were able to get them there, we actually had the advantage in manpower by about 10,000 men uh, because Beauregard's force was considerable, and uh, we won the victory. Now we just won the follow-on victory here. So you can see Captain Kemper loses face, battery commander. General Anderson loses face. I'm assuming that's on the Yankee side. And... Support for the Yankee cause waivers. Battle of Winchester, June 24th, 1861. Three days after the last one, 35,000 men under General Shields did... Wait. I didn't think the other half of the army showed up. It didn't look like they did. But you can see sick... Oh, wait. This is... Sorry. It's looking at first Winchester, which is what we had fought before. So actually, the Yankees outnumbered us still for that battle. And then the... Uh, Second battle here, 3,000 to 2,800 casualties. So if we take a look at the uh, second battle of Winchester reports, ended with the Army of Northeastern Virginia withdrawing. My command has earned us a total victory with the enemy running for their lives. The enemy has reportedly suffered 2,900 casualties, 386 killed, 530 captured. Their morale is believed to be stable. Our casualties were 2,800 men, 346 killed, 690 missing, the rest wounded. Um, supply situation mediocre. We captured another 1,900 rifles and six guns from the battlefield. 555 enemy soldiers have been captured, uh, or 554, and sent to our POW camps. So, that will probably lead to routes and enemy units withdrawing. It does. The Department of Pennsylvania has not started their invasion of Virginia, so that's another 15,000 men to the east. So that's good for us. Now, the Army of the Shenandoah under Johnson is in rough shape. Northeastern Virginia. Didn't we just defeat that one? The battle. The Department of the Ohio is withdrawing. They've suffered heavy casualties. Okay. 
Joseph E. Johnson's not ready for another fight yet. All right, so Johnson's force, basically, Jackson was wounded, and McCullough's brigade is not in great shape. Longstreet, how's Longstreet doing fame-wise, by the way? He fought fucking brilliantly in the last battle. All of his traits are moving up. Johnson's traits are moving up, his fame also. Early, French, McCullough. Kemper was disgraced, it's sad. Politically assigned, maybe he can't be disgraced. Insignificant fame, but not disgraced. Okay. Meanwhile, how's, uh, I don't think anyone from the last battle in the army of uh, Northern Virginia would have accomplished much. Walton actually was well regarded after the first battle. Not sure why. PGT is a famous legendary commander. Okay. So let's take a look here. With those armies withdrawing, the Department of Pennsylvania is not moving south. So that's good news. Does the message maybe indicate a gain or loss of fame stars? Whether they're famous or not? Usually Disgraced actually has a... So when you go to a commander here, you'll see they have certain traits like West Point graduate or branch of the engineers or veteran of the Mexican-American War. And if they're Disgraced, there's usually a little icon here that indicates they're Disgraced. My understanding is commanders can now undisgrace themselves. And so I would think maybe Kemper just, I don't know, did a... Because they won the battle, maybe it didn't consider it a disgrace. I'm not sure. In any event, that's another good result for us. So you can see here, the enemy still outnumbers us considerably in terms of men fielded. In terms of casualties, 11,000 to 7,100. If we actually take a look down at our prisoner of war camp down near Charleston, I'm sure it is considerably overcrowded although we were expanding it i believe i think we issued an order to expand its size oh, where is it somewhere down here here we go so right now we have 2700 prisoners out of a potential 1000 we are upgrading it um, but it is overcrowded so we can see here pow camps overcrowded 273 percent those conditions i believe impact union war effort i'm assuming they're hearing like oh my goodness there's all this bad things that are happening to prows and then we do have projects available so if we go to assignable only we can do trade deals which will do what finance the nation's diplomats to negotiate more lucrative trade deals with foreign ministers the trade deals will allow better prices when importing and exporting goods and give a boost to the nation's economy Okay, that's blue. What if we don't do that? Australian rifles are blue also. British artillery is blue. British warships are blue. So trade deal sounds like a good deal, but I would rather get weapons first because we're struggling to produce our own. So I'm going to hold off on that. Now... Well, there you have it, everyone. Another victory for the Confederacy. We've driven the Federals straight out of the Shenandoah Valley, and now we probably need some time to rest and recuperate. Our artillery suffered very bad losses, especially in Joseph E. Johnston's Army of the Shenandoah. We're going to need to get some new guns and new, some new crews there. We're going to need to build those units out. Uh, but we'll see how that happens in our next video. Uh, this was the end of the live stream here, so it's a little bit on the shorter end compared to some of the previous videos here, but we're going to cut it off here. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Please leave your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think of the AI. I thought they placed their defenses pretty competently. They probably could have placed their units a little bit better, but they really did uh, give Joseph E. Johnson's troops a, a pretty big headache. 
I kind of sped through that battle at, at higher time compressions and was maybe ideal for a truly efficient fight. But overall, I can certainly see the improvements from where this thing was six months ago. I think there's still probably a lot of work to be done, um, but uh, it still is showing promise, and I've been enjoying my time with it so far. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this. Uh, we will probably do some regiments on the channel over the next couple of days. That game's coming out very soon, and I got a copy from Micropros, so let me know if you want to see that as well. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.